Hi there, I'm Megan Ferguson and I'm a vet with SRUC Vet Services. This week we're going to touch on copper poisoning in sheep, abscesses in cattle and things you should think about before housing comes along. Hopefully we've got a good few weeks of grazing ahead of us still, but we need to think about things that might come up in the next few weeks. So every September we always see a peak in copper poisoning in sheep. We've already had a few cases and we're only just into September. So copper poisoning can affect sheep or cattle. Sheep are definitely more susceptible, with lowland breeds being much more susceptible than hill breeds. So we can get acute copper poisoning, and that's where sheep get access to cattle feed, which tends to be a bit higher than, higher than copper. So they can accidentally be fed it, they can break out and get into it, or they can find some licks that have been left out in the field. And with this we see sudden deaths as the main sign of that. But actually chronic copper poisoning is much more likely and it's the, the more common presentation that we see in the post-mortem room. So how does chronic copper poisoning come about? So the liver acts as a sponge and mops up all the copper in the body. And when it becomes too full of copper, it spills out onto the bloodstream and that's when we see issues. So copper getting into the bloodstream causes a breakdown of red blood cells. And we see this as jaundice, so yellowing of the eyes, yellowing of the mucous membranes, reduced appetites, diarrhoea, and sometimes red urine. So if you see any of these signs, be a bit suspicious of copper poisoning. And again, often we see it as sudden death. That's how it presents. So a lot of sheep this time of year, you're starting to supplement them a little bit, coming up to sales, coming up to tupping time. You might be adding in a bit of concentrate. So just be aware what you're feeding them, what the copper content is in the feed that you're feeding them. Think about any other sources of copper they have. So have they had any drenches throughout the summer that might have contained copper? And before you just start feeding them, just have a look at how much copper they're going to be getting. Speak to a nutritionist and just make sure that we can avoid cases of copper poisoning. Another issue with copper is it can be a food safety issue. So if you've got fat lambs going that have too high levels of copper, then they can't enter the food chain. So that's another reason just to watch what you're feeding them. Another thing we've been seeing in the PM room is lots of abscesses. We all love a juicy abscess in the post-mortem room, but we have been seeing a lot of beef finisher cattle and dairy cattle with liver abscesses, which is not uncommon. We see it quite a lot. But these can happen in response to a diet change as well. So the rumen um, obviously is full of bacteria that does all the digesting and when this is imbalanced through an increase in carbohydrates, if you're trying to finish animals off or, or a diet change, then the pH can drop and this causes different bacteria to proliferate and some of these different bacteria can escape the rumen and uh, the first place they end up is in the liver. And once here what happens is they set up an abscess. That abscess can sit there and not, not have any effect or it can be so big that it will affect the liver function or what can sometimes happen is a bit of it will break off and enter the bloodstream. Now if this gets to the heart, it can cause sudden death in animals. Another consequence of having abscesses in your livers is cum denation at the abattoir. So you'll have a loss of value of your carcass at the abattoir. So it's another reason just to be aware, if you're changing diets, just take advice and make sure you're doing it in a balanced way.